What's up guys and welcome to another God Forge video. In today's video we're going to be looking at why I believe Excalibur very well could be in the game as well as looking into the hero classifications as well as hero alignments. Let's dive in. Alright so let's jump into why I think the weapon we see at the end of the demo could in fact be Excalibur. This is sort of exhibit A of my first piece of evidence to back this theory. We definitely want to have you know, cool items which are hard to get and you know, named drops, that sort of type of stuff. Named drops. Okay. Now, hold on to that for just a moment. He glosses over this sort of leak so quickly and moves on to the next thing that I would have ventured to assume that most people didn't even pick up on it. What he's saying is that they want special, unique items that have, like... Old school games like World of Warcraft, for example, have legendary drops. Like you have Sulphurus, the Hand of Ragnaros, and it's literally the weapon that Ragnaros uses while he's fighting you. Later on in The Burning Crusade, you have the War Glaives of Azanoth being wielded by Illidan Stormrage. And if you defeat Illidan Stormrage, you have a chance to drop these War Glaives of Azanoth, and you can get them and use them yourself. I think this is the sort of thing he's talking about, like having Excalibur, for example, in the game that you can go in and find it and equip it to one of your champions. When they're saying like legendary weapons, I don't think they mean it in the same sense that Raid Shadow Legends does, where it just gets a few extra substat rolls. I think they actually mean weapons of myth and legend. Okay, now listen carefully to the words Hell Hades uses here. There are some very important words that he uses that leads me to believe that this very well could indeed be Excalibur, sorry, Excalibur, or at the very least, some other weapon of myth and legend. Also got this Enter Reliquary, uh, which I've seen a few people talk about, so uh, I'll take you through what that means as well. And it says, you've uncovered a Reliquary, should we proceed? What's this mean? It's basically like a secret room in our game, and for some secret rooms, you'll have to find the combinations of heroes or um or steel sets to allow you to find these rooms and go in there which will be where you're able to uncover some pretty juicy loot the idea for this for us is about community sharing interaction um you know basically allows us to do some fun stuff for events so you know suddenly we're going to throw like 10 reliquaries into the game and it's basically with some hints and the, the community go out and try and find them and then that's how they start to farm some really cool um like legendary weapons that type of thing so what he's saying is the entire community will likely have to come together to figure out the secrets to unlock these reliquaries which means it will take a substantial collective effort from us to solve the puzzle and if that is the case i find it highly unlikely that the weapons locked behind the reliquary are going to just be legendary weapons as we understand them in Raid, where the only benefit to being legendary is just a few extra substats. I think these are going to be unique, special, one-of-a-kind items that are always on your account that you could use to power up certain heroes, and I think it would make perfect sense for Excalibur to be one of these weapons. On these rewards, Notice how there's like a helm right here, and it's just a random, or it's not random, a standardized square box. Nothing particularly special here, but when you see the weapon, it says new. And it's, the, the icon is larger than the other, you know, it, the, the, the box surrounding the weapon here is larger than the box surrounding the other loot drops. Which indicates that it's something special, and it's marked with the new as if like, something you have uncovered something you've never uncovered before if this was just a run-of-the-mill piece of gear i don't think it would be like enhanced larger nor do i think it would have this new thing to indicate you've unlocked something special i think this is far more than just some six star piece of legendary gear that has random substats i think this is from the reliquary and I think once you unlock and defeat the Reliquary, you are going to earn some very special weapons of myth and legend, like possibly Excalibur, for example. All right, now let's take a closer look at the hero screen. Now, something a lot of you have probably noticed is there's this chaos symbol here, and on other champion, or sorry, other heroes, we see the order. But what I've noticed is that order and chaos don't seem to be tied to what faction they're in which makes perfect sense 
I think this order and chaos is similar to what we see for alignments in a game like Dungeons and Dragons. Chaos maybe representing not necessarily evil, but like less inclined to do like they're they're not bound by rules, right? They just kind of do whatever they want. Where order is more in line of lawful, so to speak. Like if you if you wanted to draw drastic conclusions, you could say chaos is evil and order is good, but I think it's more in line with lawful versus unlawful but as you can see it's not tied to what faction they're in which actually makes a lot of sense these are both from the kojiki faction kinoichi and musashi while both being from the kojiki faction they are not each the same alignment which makes perfect sense just because they're both from like the japanese mythology doesn't mean they both necessarily have to be good or evil so i think that's and you'll notice that same theme as we go through so we have asgard and chaos Asgard and Order, uh, Avalon and Order, but I mean, obviously, just because they're both Order doesn't necessarily mean everyone from the Avalon faction, and I know it says Olympus, this is confirmed to have been a bug, they're working on it, this is all work in progress, but he is from the Avalon, it even says right here, Protector of Avalon, uh, he is from the Avalon faction, and he is also of the Order uh, alignment. Then we have uh, Leonidas, also Order, but from Olympus. Order Olympus, Order Olympus, Chaos Olympus. So there's an outlier here. And then for Aru, it says Chaos, Chaos Aru, and Chaos Aru. So this could just be a coincidence. There very well could be people who are of the Order alignment from the Aru faction. We just may not have seen them yet. All right, one more thing I wanted to share with you guys before I go. I wanted to talk about these hero classifications, i.e. the Slayer classification for Musashi and what it, what I what I believe it means. Uh, for Slayer, I think these are going to be your raw damage dealers, sort of your glass cannons. Uh, for Defender, we actually see Brynhild use buffs to give increased defense and intercept buff to her allies. Like this skill right here, reading the runes, has an 80% chance to place defense up to on all allies for two turns, also has an 80% chance to place Intercept on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns. She is a defender, and that's exactly what she's doing. She's defending. We Unfortunately, I don't have enough information to make any plausible guesses as to what Disruptor means, because we just haven't seen enough Disruptor gameplay. But Brawler, we see Hercules uh, doing the Brawler, and he is a damage dealer, but he also seems to be able to increase his tankiness. And while he is a damage dealer, let's take a quick look at his damage multipliers. 300% attack plus 20% max HP. Without any sort of basis for comparison, we have to assume this is pretty good, but we do have a basis for comparison. So as a basis for comparison, this is Herc Smash. 300% attack plus 20% max HP. Then by comparison, we have Zeus, who attacks an enemy with 500% attack and ignores 25% defense, and then does an AOE if you know attacks all other enemies with 300% attack. Um, oh, there's no condition; it just does that. It attacks all other enemies with 300% attack, and then has a 30% chance to play stun for one turn. The chance increases to 60% if the first target was slain. So this is a significantly higher damage multiplier than what we see from Hercules over here. So that leads me to believe, I think very fairly, that the brawlers are, are are damage dealers, but they're designed to be more tanky and less effective damage dealers. Not, not necessarily to say that they're bad, but their speciality is surviving. They're brawlers. They're brawling. They're like, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're, they're, they have survivability built in over necessarily just pure raw damage. But when we look at Zeus's categorization or classification, he is a slayer. He is a pure raw damage dealer. And again, similarly to the Evoker, or sorry, not Evoker, uh, Disruptor classification, we just don't have enough information to necessarily glean what it means to be an Invoker. I don't think there's enough context to draw any definitive conclusions, but I think it's worth noting that we have five different type of hero classifications as far as we're aware. There could be more coming that we just haven't seen yet, but at the very least, we know of five. I think that's pretty exciting. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and a special thank you to my legendary tier channel member Dex for your continued support. And as fate would have it, the team at Fateless have invited me to join them on their weekly podcast. 
We're recording it on Friday. And if there is anything that you would like for me to bring up to them or ask them, make sure you leave it in the comments below or I have a post dedicated to exactly that on my community page. You can leave your input and feedback there. But that's going to do it for you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you're as excited about Godforge as I am, make sure you subscribe because I will be continuing to cover Godforge news from now until release. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I will see you all in another video soon. But until next time, everyone, take care.